Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at this MacBook Pro, early 2006. This was actually the first MacBook Pro ever produced. It came at a time when Apple was moving away from their power PC based machines and converting over to Intel. Being the first MacBook Pro, it replaced the PowerBook G4 line of portable computers from Apple, and this is their Intel offering. They wanted Mac in their name, so out went PowerBook and in came MacBook Pro. Being an early 2006 model, it's the only model of the first generation MacBook Pros to have an Intel Core Duo processor. Every model after that in the first generation from the late 2006 up to the late 2008 all came with Core 2 Duo processors. Now the difference between a Core Duo and a Core 2 Duo is that a Core Duo, such as this machine here, is 32-bit, where a Core 2 Duo is 64. So, with that being said, the Intel Core Duo in this early 2006 MacBook is held back at 1068, or Snow Leopard. But there's nothing wrong with Snow Leopard, it still works great to this very day. However, it's not the most up-to-date for web browsing activities, but we'll take a look at that later in the video. As previously mentioned, this machine has the Intel Core Duo processor. It's running at 2 GHz, however, this wasn't the baseline configuration. The baseline actually used a 1.83 GHz processor, and the top end model actually used a 2.16 GHz processor. So this came in at the middle being 2 GHz, so it was kind of a custom config or a mid-tier model for early 2006. Currently, this machine has 2 GB of DDR2 RAM, which is the max amount that this machine can support. However, with the maximum operating system being Snow Leopard, 2 GB is just fine for this machine. As for graphics, we have the ATI Mobility Radeon X1600 with 128 MB of video memory, which runs on the 15-inch 1440x900 display. Of course, the MacBook Pro first generation also had a 17-inch version as well. Inside, we also have an 80 gigabyte spinning hard drive and a super drive. So, let's go ahead and take a look around. On the left-hand side of the machine, we will find some ports. Working from left to right, we have our MagSafe power adapter port, USB 2.0, audio in, audio out, and an express card slot. Now you may also notice throughout the outer body of this machine many scrapes, scuffs, and dings. And this was a big problem with a lot of the first generation MacBook Pros, even when they were used in normal use and not banged around. A lot of them had these problems. Now when I first got this one, for example, the express card slot door, and you can see how it's a little bowed here at the bottom, it was actually way worse. It was way banged in really bad, couldn't even use the port. But with careful tooling of the outer body of the machine, you can bend all of these things back into place. One thing that I haven't done with this one yet is fix this corner. However, I'm not too concerned about it at this time as it's not affecting any internal components of the machine. But if you are looking for these, you may find many of them that are either broken or dinged up in many different ways. So keep that in mind when looking for these machines. On the right hand side of the machine, we'll find some more ports. Working from right to left, we have DVI video out, Ethernet, Firewire 400, USB 2.0, and a Kensington lock port. Also on this side of the machine, you can see some other damages that happen with years of use of these machines. You can see here the layers of the machine unlaminating themselves from each other, in addition to some screws not only missing, but the little tabs within being totally broken off. However, again, this isn't really affecting any of the functionality of the computer and isn't as bad as some of the MacBook Pro first generations can get. On the front of the machine on the left, we'll find our IR or infrared receiver, which works with the Apple remote. In the middle, we'll find our button for opening the screen. All you have to do is push it and it pops open, push it down and it clips back into place. On the right side of the button, we will find an indicator light for if the machine is powered on or sleeping. On the right hand side, we will find our slot for the super drive. On the rear of the machine, we will obviously find the hinge for the screen in addition to ventilation. On the bottom of the machine, we will find our rechargeable replaceable battery. 
right here, and our status light, which shows us how much the battery is currently charged. However, mine, the light does not work, so I need to replace the battery because it doesn't hold a charge anymore, which is quite common with many of the batteries for the first generation MacBook Pros. They don't seem to last very long. Above that, we can find the service door for the RAM if you want to upgrade or replace it. With the machine open, we can see our 15.4 inch widescreen display with the matte finish. Above that, in the center, we can see our 480p EyeSight camera. Next to that, we will find a status indicator light showing when the camera is in use. And above both of those things, we can find two clips, which are used for when the machine is closed. At the bottom of the screen, we can find our MacBook Pro logo. Below the screen, we will find our keyboard, which is backlit, in addition to the trackpad, which does support two-finger scrolling. You will notice on either side of the backlit keyboard the speakers, with the right-hand side having the power button. So, let's go ahead and see how well this thing runs. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn it on. Here we go. As previously mentioned, this machine is running 1068 Snow Leopard. If you do notice any waviness on the screen, that's not there in real life, that's just the camera trying to focus on the machine. You may also notice on the screen some blemishes. I don't think all the machines have this, I think it's just however this machine was used, uh, whoever had it before I purchased it. Surprisingly, it doesn't take too incredibly long to boot up. And here we are. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and we'll go to About This Mac. We can see our version, 1068, our 2 GHz Intel Core Duo processor, and our 2 GB of RAM. We'll go ahead and go to Safari because everybody likes getting on the internet. This is an old version of Safari, it's version 5 from 2013, so it's pretty out of date. And you can even see here on Apple's front page, their main display isn't even showing up. But you can go to other websites, such as YouTube here. It'll tell you that your machine is no longer supported, but that doesn't matter, you can still search, and if you just want to get around it, just click on the YouTube logo. And there's YouTube. Of course, two-finger scrolling does work on this machine. Uh, once it decides to do it, there we go. Apparently it had to load that advertisement at the top before it would allow me to scroll. And you can see YouTube here, it loads just fine. And it'll play just fine too. This machine does struggle with doing HD content, even 720p, at least through the internet. You can do... Uh, 720p and even 1080p, you know, just a video file that you're playing, that's absolutely fine. It's just streaming through the internet is what slows it down a little bit. We'll go ahead and quit Safari. We'll go ahead and go to Firefox because that is the most up-to-date web browser for this machine. It is an old version of Firefox, it's version 48. However, it cannot update any further due to the fact that this machine has the Core Duo processor and it is running Snow Leopard. I believe if it was running Snow Leopard on a Core 2 Duo processor, you would be able to upgrade a little further. But if you do have a Core 2 Duo processor in one of these, you can run Lion. Which would probably be a little, obviously, a little more up to date than Snow Leopard is. But I do enjoy using Snow Leopard. Oh, before we quit, I don't know why I was doing that, let's go ahead and look at some web pages. We'll go to one of the lighting sites here. I always like using this website just for a general purpose web page for an example of how well things load. And there's plenty of pictures here and it loads all that just fine. There's not really any waiting around. So that all works well. We'll go ahead and go to YouTube. And that loads right up. It loads a little bit faster actually than YouTube did on Safari. And of course we can scroll and uh, it'll load things as we go along. 
it seems to work out just fine. As I may have previously mentioned, uh, HD content is not the best through streaming, but you can do 480p with YouTube on here. Sometimes it'll try to do 720p, but uh, it, it struggles a little bit with streaming through the internet anyway. But other than that, you can throw any website at this thing, Facebook, whatever, and it seems to do just fine. I haven't had any problems with any websites that I've used for school or anything yet. So I'll go ahead and quit out of that. Chrome also works on this machine, however it's quite old. It's version 38, I believe. We also have an older version of iTunes, which I believe is uh, 11. We also have Office 2011 on here, which we can see in the Applications folder. With the applications that I have installed, all of these work just fine. You can edit videos on this still, believe it or not, although it just takes a while to do so. Definitely not as fast as a more modern Mac. Most of these applications work just fine, with the exception being Minecraft does not run on this machine anymore, and Roblox doesn't run on this machine anymore either. My cousin's kids like to uh, play both of those games, but unfortunately they do not run on this machine anymore. All the other uh, applications, including Spotify, still work on this computer just fine. So, you can run Office 2008 and even anything from the PowerPC era, because Snow Leopard has uh, Rosetta, which is a program that's built in to run PowerPC applications. That was gotten rid of when they moved to Lion, so you can still run PowerPC applications, such as uh, Adobe Creative Suite 2, or CS2 here, and uh, it's a joy just to use these older uh, applications, such as the old version of Photoshop, it's not really much difference to me uh, using an older version like this compared to a really new version. I don't need any fancy stuff anyway. So using an older version like this of the Adobe Suite is just fine. And it runs very well on this machine. So let's go ahead and we will look at Word here. You can hear the hard drive thinking away. We'll go ahead and choose our blank document, and there it is. Of course, you still have the ribbons that you do in Office 2016, so nothing really different there. It just kind of looks like different colors for the theme, obviously. So there's Word and everything. Of course, as I previously mentioned, the Adobe applications run just fine on this machine. And, uh... Everything works very well, believe it or not, on such an old machine. I do love using this thing. It's nice going back. And uh, it has some pretty nice features in it, too. Now that I think of it, I'd like to also share with you the light-up keyboard. Let me move the camera down here, and we will go ahead and turn it on. It appears to not allow me to do so because it's not dark enough out. But on either side here... Uh, our ambient light sensors, so if I cover it up, it should turn on, which it isn't doing. There you go. Once I cover up these, uh, well, there was a light sensor somewhere. See how it turns on for a minute? It, then it turns off. I'm not covering up the sensor very well. But, um, yeah, if I was in a darker room, we would definitely have our uh, ambient light sensor here. Now, now I got it working. So you can of course turn it up and down. And it's very nice having this feature. Very nice. And of course, take my hands off the ambient light sensors and it senses the light in the room so it automatically turns off. So anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this review of the first MacBook Pro in 2017. This thing is such a joy to use even though how old it is. I, I really enjoy using it. So, once again I really hope you enjoyed and also please comment, rate, and subscribe and thank you very much for watching.